everybody, welcome to the Acrylic Asylum. I'm Mike Ferris. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you're new to my channel, I want to welcome you. And if you'd like to learn acrylic painting and techniques and all the different various paintings that I do, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the lessons. So now in this painting, I'm going to show you the different values of green that I'm using and just how I mix those and the simple brush stroke techniques that I'm going to be using. So if you're following along, make sure you watch the whole video all the way through so you don't miss out on any of the lesson details. So now let's get started. So I'm just starting off, I have two pieces of paper and I've taped them together on the back seam to seam and I made it an 11 by 14 inches total which is the size of my hardboard canvas and as you can see I've already drawn out my image using one inch by one inch squares for a grid to locate everything properly. So I'd go ahead and pause if you're following along and go ahead and draw out what you see here or use the grid method or if you're good at drawing maybe you might want to change the view a little bit. So I've just basically drawn it on and then put some black wax paper behind and my stylus to transfer the image that you see. And so now starting off, I got phthalo blue, a little touch of that permanent black and some titanium white to brighten it up. And this is gonna be the start of my sky background. Okay, now a little bit of titanium white for some clouds and I'm just using the corner of my brush and doing like a swirly motion. And I did not really clean my brush, I just wiped most of the paint off. And so now I'm getting some permanent black after cleaning my brush and I'm just going to go ahead and start applying some of this black on some of the outlines and in some various places. So without cleaning my brush, I'm just grabbing some more phthalo blue and more titanium white. And that just makes what's called a Payne's gray, which is basically just blue with a little black in it to dull it down. And then I add white just to brighten it up a little bit so I can see that. And just some window area details right here, just gonna fill that in. And now I'm gonna get some yellow, a little bit of phthalo blue, a tiny bit of permanent black, just a teeny tiny touch. And now some white into that, and as you can see, it makes this kind of dark greenish sort of turquoisey type color. And that's going to go up here on the window, and that's going to be one of those built-in like visor colors that you see on windows that are streaked across to kind of help keep the sun out. And so that'll be for that. Okay, and again, without cleaning my brush, I'm taking just permanent black since black will cover anything up. And I'm just going to fill in the rest of this windshield here with this dark color. And now just titanium white. I did clean my brush. I'm just going to redefine these windshield wipers for now. And now with permanent black again, I'm going to go into these letters and fill those in. Okay, now going back to that same green with the black, the yellow, the blue and actually more titanium white this time. And this is gonna be for the sign to fill in around the words taxi. And honestly, I should have done this color first and then put the letters on top, but that's okay if you're following along. Just go ahead and do it this way, and if you do cover your letters up, just go back in there when this dries and reapply that black in there. Okay, so now that light paint's gray, and I'm just gonna fill this area in here, and now some black and some white to make a gray color, and that's for the rear view mirror here, and I'm just gonna fill that in right now for this. And without cleaning my brush, now I'm picking up titanium white and just here and there going to put in some of this detail and highlight that's hitting the mirror. just grabbing permanent black again and I'm gonna scratch a line right in here and this just helps sort of shape this sign and add a little bit more interest to it. Now after cleaning off my brush I'm taking some cad yellow a little bit of this phthalo blue and here's where we're gonna start getting into the different greens here so I'm just gonna make a basic general green color like you see here nothing too dark or light just a base for now and on top of this, I'll be varying different values as well. And I wanna get the base on there first because that's gonna really help to create the dimension 
and the different changes will look more natural as it kind of blends into that base color underneath. So as I'm putting more paint on my brush, I wanna let you guys know that I don't like to put a whole lot of paint on my brush all at once because if you have too much paint, it's really gonna get messy and things get covered up that you don't want covered up. And then also too, as we're gonna be putting values on, I'm gonna be showing you how I dust out these colors into each other to sort of blend them together to give it that natural transition of light and dimension that you see in real life. And so if you have too much paint on your brush, it's gonna be pretty hard to do the blending technique that I'll show you. And the realism will get lost and it's the difference between seeing hard lines and then lines that transition like they would in real life. And so that can be the difference between something that's cartoony looking and something that's real looking. So now I'm just mixing up some of this phthalo blue, a little bit of that black and a little bit of white in there. That's that Payne's gray color. And again, you can see the different values there. I put a little bit darker on top and then I added more white on the one down below. So that just changes some dimension and I'm gonna be working and playing those back and forth. So now I'm just grabbing permanent black and with that I'm gonna go ahead and apply that here and there on some things. So without cleaning my brush, I'm picking up more phthalo blue and a little bit more white. And with that, I'm gonna do a darker Payne's gray on the top of the headlamp here that you see. And I'll put some of that color in here as well just to change it up a bit and show some cloud reflection a little bit. So when you're painting and you have colors involved, like for the green, for instance, when you have yellow and you have the blue together, if you've already got blue on your brush or yellow already on your brush, you don't have to keep cleaning your brush in order to change the values since those two colors are involved. Same thing with the phthalo, or not the phthalo, the Payne's gray. When you have phthalo blue or black already on your brush, you just have to take the other color and change the value by either adding more darker color or adding more white or whatever. So. That helps save time on cleaning all the time, so just keep that in mind. So I've taken some raw umber and mixed it with a little black and put a little white in it, and it changed the value again a little bit, as you can see. And I went down below and sort of barely kind of blended it up into that Payne's gray a little bit up top. And so now I'm taking some permanent black, and I'm gonna go ahead and put in for this shadow that's right underneath here, and that's gonna help contrast some of the light that's gonna be really shining through this headlamp. So after some more of that Payne's Gray with more titanium white, I did clean my brush off and now I'm taking Cad Orange, just a little bit of that phthalo blue because those are complementary colors. And so what that does is it takes the orange and dulls it down a little bit. And now titanium white to brighten it up. And now I have this dull, bright orange color that I'm gonna be using. And with that, I'm just gonna apply that here and there. black and some white and I'm making this mid gray tone and with that that's going to be the start of the base color for the inside of the headlamp. Okay now getting that light Payne's gray color again that black blue and some white and with that just here and there I'm going to put that in and this is going to be the start of the dimension and colors that are going to be playing in this thing. And so the motto again, as you've seen in my other videos, if you follow along, is here and there, but not everywhere when I put these colors down because I don't want to cover everything up because that then loses dimension and texture and realism because I want all these colors that come out of this thing to really shine out and bring out that realistic look. So now taking that dull, bright orange color I made, and as you can see, I'm scratching that in next. And again, not covering everything up. 
And now with just titanium white, and I just wiped my brush off just so I could have it not so bright just yet. And I'm gonna go ahead and scratch some of this white in here and there for direct highlights. So now I'm grabbing some more titanium white to make it a little brighter now. And so I'm using the edge of my flat brush and I'm using my number four flat brush, by the way. And I'm just doing these little lines here and there. And now this is gonna be the start of this really awesome, vibrant looking detailed headlamp. So along with that white too, I'm also taking some permanent black and not cleaning my brush. And as you can see, I'm taking these dark lines and I'm also going in there with those as well. And I'm not covering up that white. So by adding in that dark, it's gonna help bring out some of the shadow, which is gonna help contrast against some of that direct highlight. And in turn, that's gonna help with dimension and depth and more details. Okay, and so now picking up more titanium white, but this time because of that black still in there, and I'm not cleaning my brush because those colors are still involved. I'm just changing values by picking up one or leaving one of them out more. And so that changes that value. And so now you can see that darker gray value in there amidst that lighter tone that I put in first. And so that helps change and add more dimension as I put more colors in there as well. And now more titanium white. And I'm just gonna keep building layers upon layers. And again, here and there, but not everywhere and not covering everything up and really bringing this guy out really well. So now with that Payne's gray color again, it's that blue, black, and white. And it's more titanium white this time. And I did put a little bit of that highlight on top of the headlamp there. And now I'm just grabbing, after cleaning my brush, some yellow. And with that, I'm just gonna help streak some of that in. And this is gonna be some of that reflective light that's gonna be hitting some of this body of this. And so now I'm taking permanent, I'm sorry, phthalo blue and some of that yellow. And so the more blue that I put in, the darker it's gonna be. And I wanna put that dark line in. And I am turning my canvas because it just helps with my angle on that and that is allowed. So feel free to do whatever you need to do to get that angle right so you can paint this with correct ergonomics. And so just a little bit of titanium white now to make the edge of that pop just a little bit against that dark line there that you saw. And now going into that dull orange color, and I did not put as much titanium white in. As you can see, it's a little bit darker. And I wanted it a little darker there because in the reflection of this green car, it is not gonna be as bright as the other stuff. So now just a little bit more titanium white in that orange, and I do wanna put this little highlight on the outside of this right here. And just little details like this just helps really bring out the dimension and the reflective light that's going on. going back into that blue and that yellow and more blue to make it darker and with that I'm going to create this shadow that's being cast on the body of the car by this headlamp and in some areas here and there are going to be showing some different values of this dark to bring out some of the contrast of some of the lighter areas so if you're following along just go ahead and apply those in the general areas I'm doing it and it will be just fine it will work out great and I want to tell you too, as I've said in other videos, you don't have to have the same exact colors I'm using because if you have any kind of green, it will work and be just fine. At this point, it's just like uh, playing with picture filters and they will work together as long as you put your values in the right place, everything should work out. So what I've done now is I took a little bit of black and put it into my yellow. And when you do that, that changes the green even more from everything else. Now I have this more army looking green. And as you can see, it looks a little different than everything else. And over in this area, the value does change a little bit more. And so a little bit more titanium white. And I'm creating this line, as you see right there, that kind of separates some of this green. It is still that same army green. And so now I'm just grabbing, after cleaning my brush, I'm grabbing just regular yellow and some white. And while some of this paint is still wet, I am just going to barely load my brush and more or less dry brush it in. And as I do that, that helps sort of blend it in. As you can see, it looks like it's transitioning real natural-like. 
and then a little bit of light sneaking into the shadow right here with that same color. And then on top of that, I'm gonna take that dark shadow color again with more phthalo blue in it and sort of settle that back a little bit as you saw there. And then I'm gonna also redefine this line here and sort of clean that up a little bit like so. And then also down here, I'm gonna apply some of that darker green for some more shadow and dimension right there as well. yellow and more white again and again this is my highlight color in the screen car and right against that dark line right there that's just gonna help pop that guy right out that dark and that light that's contrasting it really gives it that edge and it really makes it look like lights really zinging off the edge of that and so with that I'm just gonna meander that down like so and here and there just apply some of these highlights Also right here I want to hit some of that highlight where the lights hitting the edge and in this little area there and as you can see it makes it look more detailed and more natural and so now there's a really bright area right here and this is going to be the start of direct light that's eventually going to be a lot brighter right here but first I want to take this yellow color and as I get out into this green color I'm going to barely touch the canvas and let the bristles just kind of dust over and as I do that, it really blends it into that other color there. And so by doing that, that's how we apply this blending technique. So the more pressure I put on my brush, the more color I lay down. And then the lighter I drag it up and apply less pressure, it tends to blend it rather than lay more color down. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm adding more white now, not cleaning my brush off yet. And look, I can even use my finger to sort of tap it out. And so while I still have that color in my brush, again, I'm gonna go in here and add another layer of this highlight color here and there. Now I'm grabbing some of that yellow, just a teeny, teeny touch of that permanent black. I mean, just a hair and mostly titanium white. I wanna make this really light, dull yellow color like this. And with that, I'm gonna block in this floodlight down here and that'll be the start of the base color for that. cleaning my brush and grabbing permanent black I'm gonna start going in here down on this one and I'm just gonna start applying some of these lines here and start filling in some of these dark areas while that floodlight dries because I want to add some layers and texture and different values on top of that but I don't want it to mix into that wet paint so I'm gonna leave that alone and come right here and again I'm gonna take more phthalo blue into that yellow for more of a darker green as you can see I'm doing more of this dark sort of shadow area and I'm gonna apply some of that down here as well. And this just really helps pop this out of here and give more details. So back to permanent black and with that I'm just going to scratch in some detail lines here and I want to give the impression that this piece down here on the bumper has got this like pointy sort of cone shape to it so this is going to be the start of creating that. brush and with the paint still white as you can see I took some titanium white and I scratched in some lines there for some highlights and with some of that white now I'm gonna go in and on this grill in the front here and just put in some of these lines and clean up some of this black stuff that I got kind of going everywhere I wasn't too concerned with being too neat with it because check it out I can just go in there and cover that right up 
and just like that, this is what I love about acrylic painting, there is no such thing as an accident. Now Bob Ross will tell you in the oil world that it's a happy accident, but it's still an accident. In the acrylic world, because these paints dry fairly quickly, as you'll discover, that you can cover anything up and it won't mix, and you can use that to push colors back, you can use those colors to redefine shapes that may have gone out of lines in places, and so, I mean, I'm telling you, acrylics, you can do anything you want with these colors and make them anything you want by doing that. So now I'm just taking some more of that black and some of that yellow. That's that army green color that I made. And I put a little bit more of that darker value by adding less titanium white, as you can see. Now I'm creating some of these shadow lines that are gonna show some of the details of this floodlight that's going on. And on top of that, I'll add some titanium white for some direct highlights that'll be hidden, and that'll help contrast against some of that dark stuff. see I took some titanium white to add some of those direct highlights but not covering everything up and now with that darker color a little bit darker so less titanium white in that black and yellow mixture and I'm creating somewhat of this area where maybe if you wanted to change that light that's where you would unscrew it at so just a little bit more interest more detail and now with that darker green again it's more phthalo blue than yellow and I'm just creating this shadow area around this floodlight and that really helps to pop that out of there and to find the difference on that. Okay, now a little bit more titanium white and just gonna go ahead and brighten up some areas here and there. So as you can see with all these different values of green now, we're starting to really see this thing pop out and shine and have all this reflective light in there. So it kind of looks like you can see into the paint job and that really helps bring out a lot of depth and dimension in that. I like the way this is turning out. And so now I'm just getting just permanent black and I wanna make the separation between the tire and the underneath part of the car right here. And now I have to be careful because as you can see, the black is involved with the tire as well as the underneath, but I have to lighten the tire just a little bit and I have to add some details in there and play those back and forth to kind of create that dimension without losing the tire within that shadow underneath. So you want to make the tire just a little bit lighter by adding more titanium white in it for a darker gray versus the pure black like you see here. And that really shows the difference in separation on that. So go ahead and play around with that. And you're going to find in the acrylic world, it's less about drawing and more about color value and it's more of the struggle of how to mix the colors until you get them to look the right way. So that's gonna be your biggest challenge on any painting. But if you stick with me and watch the videos all the way through, you'll learn everything I can show you about color mixing and trust me, you will learn a lot because I've learned a world of information on this and I can show you on every painting exactly how I mix these colors and what to do with those. So I hope you're paying attention and following along and most of all, I hope and pray that you get many, many good results and you find the joy and the freedom of painting that it brings. So now with some titanium white, I'm just gonna go in here and you can see I'm tapping it out with my finger because that helps blend out that light and give it that natural transition. And then again under here, that darker green. So I'm just kind of jumping around a little bit and just going for these details and adding a few more layers and just sort of bringing out some more depth and bringing some finishing touches on some things here and there. So now back to my dark green now and I'm just going through and just adding some more layers which in turn builds more dimension and makes it more smooth looking so as you've seen in the acrylic painting it's really too about layers and it's about adding just more depth and dimension by adding more layers on top of each other because as you saw in the beginning when we were blocking everything in that first layer never looks good and it's not supposed to with acrylics because that works in our advantage when we start adding more layers on top of that abstract looking first layer to create all these different changes and realism that you see with involved with these things. So now I'm just taking black and some white, that's some gray color there and that's the base color for the rim of the tire. So without cleaning my brush, now just titanium white and I'm just gonna streak in here and there some of these direct highlights that are gonna be hitting the chrome rim. So on 
top of that lighter gray color for the tire now without going completely to the edge. I want to go inside of it a little bit and add some permanent black and just add some texture and dimension to the tire pieces here. And so I'm going to do that kind of in random spots and if you'd like to I would pause and sort of do these details a little bit and kind of follow along with the general layout of this thing and this will bring out the texture and it'll look like the tire should within that shadow and so in this way it won't get lost. Okay, so without cleaning my brush, I'm going to pick up some raw umber into this mixture and a little bit of titanium white. And I wanted to do that because as you can see, it made a different type of gray than the other grays. And so again, this is about value and about changing them in such a way that tells that story in that tire area that this is the tire, this is the road, that's the direct shadow for the underneath part of the car. And it has to be done in such a way where the values are set so that you can see the difference between those because otherwise all this black involved in these dark colors, they're gonna get lost within there if I don't change those values the right way. So just calling out again these colors, it's very important. And so if you're following along, and I hope you are, then go ahead and pause and play these back and forth and work with this and see what you can come up with. Okay, and just like all the other chrome shiny pieces that has this dull light orange color, I'm going to go ahead and take that same color and reflect some of that by scratching it into some of that entire chrome area there because it just wouldn't be right to leave that out because then it would say that it's probably not as shiny as the rest of the chrome on there. So again, this helps tell that story. It tells our eye how bright something is, how shiny something is when you incorporate the different colors and the values of different things going on like that. So now in here and within this grill, I'm going to go ahead and take this darker gray color and I kind of want to scratch over just a teeny bit of this grill over here because I want to have it look like it's sort of in a shadow area and then it gets brighter as it comes out like you see there. So go ahead and scratch some of that in and again if you cover up anything that you don't like, there's too much gray, you can always come back in after it dries and add more white in there and knock that back. And you can actually omit this step. If you don't want to put that shadow in, that's fine. It'll still look pretty good. I just like the different changes and just the details. And when you add more shadow and more details, it really makes a difference on how real and how interesting this looks. So the more you can do and the more layers you can put down, the more real and the more interesting that it'll look. So that's up to you with time and desire and all that stuff. So. Kind of do what you want to do and decide how many times you want to go back in and play with these layers. And for me, I did it about, I would say about three times I put down different layers and kind of went back over it. So again, I'm going over this again, and this time I've added more white. And now I'm going back to my floodlight and I'm going to brighten that up again with some bright direct highlights here and there. And as you can see, that just makes that pop out even more as you can see like that. So now just going to go ahead and add some more details in the chrome area of the tire here. Just some more direct highlight with some white in there. And again as the model goes here and there but not everywhere. Not covering everything up so that we don't lose that shine. You really want that dark in there to show through because that's what's going to contrast and make all this bright white highlight really pop out of there. And so by covering all of it up you'll lose that shine. You really want that dark stuff in there to help complement that. So again up here with some bright just direct titanium white. I'm just going to hit some of these lines here and there and really make that guy pop out even more.
now I'm grabbing some of that dull orange color and I'm just putting that back in here where I'd covered it up. And see, that's what I mean about acrylics. You can just put it right back in there, no problem. And now up here again with less titanium white because it is on the green part of the car and I want it a little bit darker there. And so now I have matte medium here and I'm going to use that to make my color transparent because I want to do this yellow and white, mostly white, and just a teeny bit of that color and mostly some matte medium on my brush. And that's going to help create this sunlight that's hitting the windshield right here. But I want to give it transparency so you can still see right through it. And that really, really helps bring this guy to life because now we have a, a direct light source that's hitting everything. And now it stands to reason why this car is shining so bright and why there's all this reflective light because we have the sun out, it's a nice day, and it's beaming down on this car and it's just streaking off of that windshield like this. So that matte medium, as you can see, really brings out that effect really well and I love matte medium for these things. And I wanna do a video soon that shows the different ways you can use matte medium and it'd probably be like two or three minutes, but there's a lot to say about matte medium within three minutes because there's so many ways that you can use this thing. And I absolutely love it for so many effects. So after streaking that in now, I've got some titanium white and a little bit of yellow that I'm gonna put on. And I just wanna hit the rim of the top of the car right there. And finally, now I wanna take my script liner brush, lots of water, titanium white, and I'm just gonna go ahead and sign this piece right here. I want to thank you guys so much for hanging in there and giving this one a shot. And if you just wanted to watch for your first time out, I encourage you to go out and grab some paint and grab what you got and go for it, man. This stuff is so fun. It's so simple. And you'll be amazed at how well you can paint when you follow along and just go step by step as I break it down. I'm telling you, it will work for you. Trust me on that. The paint itself just does what it does. And all you have to do is just put it down like I'm showing you and you will learn so much and you can be turned loose on the world and start painting anything you want after that. So again, guys, I want to thank you so much. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to learn and see more lessons. And if you have any questions or comments, drop them things down below. I'd love to hear from you and work with any problems or questions or things that you guys have. So until next time, guys, happy painting.